Number 13. Water is moving at a velocity of 2 meters per second through a hose with an internal diameter of 1.6 centimeters. Letter A, what is the flow rate in liters per second? All right, so here's a little diagram, right? We're trying to calculate flow rate here. Uh, so that's Q, right? Volume flow rate. And they told us the velocity and they also told us the diameter. So we're thinking about how are these variables related? Well, they're probably related via this equation over here on the right hand side, right? So for letter A, it says that the volume flow rate will be equal to the area multiplied by the average velocity. Now, the thing is, though, you better make sure that your distance units are consistent. If this is in meters, this better be in meters, okay? Also, uh, right, thinking about it's a tube, so therefore the cross-sectional area is a circle, we can expand on the area as well, right? This is pi r squared times n the velocity. So we also need, they told us the diameter, but we need the radius. And we have to make sure that this is also in terms of meters. So... Converting this into meters just divided by 100. So we realize that the diameter would then be 0 0.0160 meters. All you have to do is move that decimal two place to the left. Then knowing that this is the diameter, you can just take this and divide it by two to then find the radius, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do here in the formula. So this is gonna be pi multiplied by the radius, which is 0 0.0160 divided by two squared, then multiplied by now that velocity of 2.00. So let's see what we get for the volume flow rate. So this is gonna be pi uh, times parentheses 0 0.016 divided by two, square that, and then multiply by two. So there's 4.02, 4.02 times 10 raised to the negative four, right? Negative four, and this is now, what do we have? Cubic meters per second. All right, because the distance unit was in meter and time was in second, as you can see from the velocity. So this is the volume flow rate. Uh, so now it says <clears throat> letter B. The fluid velocity in the hose's nozzle is 15 meters per second. What is the nozzle's inside diameter now? Uh, so the one assumption that we have to make here is that when we found this calculate, when we found out this volume flow rate, right, that was flowing through the two uh, through the hose itself. So I'm going to write a little Q sub H. We, the assumption is that this there already is a nozzle on the end of this hose somewhere, right? So this hose might continue somewhat, right? It might continue here, right? And then it's going to be some type of, oh God, how would I even draw? Some type of nozzle here, <laughs> something like that, all right? So the assumption is that the nozzle is already on the hose because if it's not, right, then we actually can't solve the problem. Because as soon as you put this nozzle thing on the end of the hose, right, so assuming that this was the volume flow rate without the nozzle, then as soon as we put the nozzle on, it adds more resistance. And since it adds more resistant, it, resistance, it will actually decrease the overall flow rate. But, okay, so that hopefully that makes sense. But if the nozzle was already on this thing and we calculated now the flow rate through the tube, then the flow rate through the tube will equal the flow rate out of the nozzle, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So that being the case, I have to assume that the, um, uh, that the nozzle here was already on the hose when we calculated this. And now if I make that assumption, which is the only way to perform this problem, otherwise we don't have enough information, we can say that the volume flow rate through the hose will equal the volume flow rate through the uh, nozzle, okay? And now... I want to expand on this Q of the nozzle, right? They told me the velocity and they want to find the nozzle's inside diameter. So what I need to do is now realize that the volume flow rate through the hose okay, will equal then the area of the nozzle multiplied by the velocity through the nozzle. Remember, I'm just using this equation over here to expand on the flow rate of the nozzle. Uh, now, if I'm being asked to find diameter, I know diameter is tied up here in the area somehow, correct? So why don't we do this? Let's just solve this equation simply for area now. So we realize that the area of the nozzle will then be equal to the volume flow rate through that hose portion divided then by the average uh, velocity through the nozzle. Now we know that it's, uh, well, we, well, it's asking for diameter. So we can assume that then the uh, cross-sectional area of the nozzle here is circular. All right. So we know now, and we can right plug in now this area of a circular cross-section is pi r squared. And we can then realize that um, we can now take this as QH all over V sub N. And now I can solve this for R if I want it, right? 
So if I solve this thing for r, we have to divide the pi on over, correct? So that would be q sub h all over pi times v sub n. And then this is r squared, right? So you gotta take the square root of both sides, okay? To get rid of the square. So what I'm gonna do is just do that all basically in one step here. So this is then your radius value. But remember, we didn't wanna know the radius, we wanna know the diameter. So I can further expand on this formula and I'm gonna write it then over here. So I'll continue it out on the other side. It might get a little confusing, but we can then say the diameter. Right? And you don't, oops, well, you don't necessarily need to do this. You can find the radius and then multiply it by two. I'm doing it all at once. So this is Q sub H divided then by pi times V sub N. Take that and then multiply it by two. Okay, this is not under the radical. Now we have our diameter formula and we can calculate. So square root of this thing, okay. 4.02 times 10 to the minus fourth, divided then by pi, times that velocity now, right through the nozzle, which was 15 meters per second. Great, all the units are lining up. And then take that and multiply it by two, and what do we get? So uh, seconds, uh, so square root of that answer, 4.021, blah, blah, I'm using the exact number, times 10 to the minus four. Then take that and divide it now by parenthesis pi times 15. Close those parentheses, find that answer, and then take that and multiply it by two. And here we go. The diameter now is going to be, let me do it in scientific. So 5.84, right? So 5.84 5 times 10 raised to the minus three, right? Minus three. And this is in terms of meters, okay? If you want to convert that into centimeters, or whatever, by all means, feel free. It doesn't ask for a specific unit, so that is acceptable. Guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Take care.